Hello there. The game you can currently see on screen is called Spelunky 2, and it is the latest game to spring out of the mind of indie game designer Derek Yu. Huh, that rhymes. Derek Yu is very intricate and thoughtful about the things he creates, and is generally quite open about the design philosophies and ideas he has. I have read and listened to a lot of his output, and as it turns out, Derek is a pretty smart lad. He is an inspiration to me in game dev, and has heavily influenced the way I think about designing my own games. And he has recently done a write-up about some fictional indie game developer archetypes. These archetypes summarise what Derek sees as the most common reasons people get stuck when making indie games. I've put a link to the write-up in the description, I really recommend reading it yourself as you might interpret the source material differently to me. This is my interpretation of what Derek has written and I'll be mixing in my own thoughts with it all the way throughout this video. Remember to subscribe for more game dev content and let's crack on. The first archetype that Derek creates is called the Daydreamer, which he describes as someone who lives in their notebooks and design docs. They like to enthusiastically come up with tons of ideas without actually knowing how to act on any of them. And I know this is how I was when I first started thinking about making games, because I think it's this that gets most people interested in making games in the first place. We get inspired by the games we play and want to improve or change certain parts of them in a way we think would be better. The reality of only being a daydreamer though is that no games will ever get made and you run the risk of just being an ideas guy. Because coming up with ideas isn't actually that difficult, but coming up with ideas that you can actually act on and do something with is really difficult. It's only when we start to make games ourselves that we realise how difficult coding, art and music all actually are to do well and cohesively for a game. And although this may seem like an obstacle at first, this sharp learning curve actually really helps us temper our daydreaming ideas. It makes us more practical and equipped to make an actual game in the future. However, if you do just genuinely like designing worlds and coming up with new ideas, and you don't particularly like any of the actual implementation aspects of making games, you might genuinely enjoy putting your ideas to an environment that will accommodate them better, such as tabletop pen and paper games where the medium is the boundless limitations of the human mind instead of the medium of computers that in reality are quite restricted. Derek next describes the inventor. This is a person who generally loves to build prototypes, implementing new ideas into their game and adding new features to what they've already done, but they probably start to lose interest once it comes to generating the actual content for the game. Oh, you had fun making the physics and unique mechanics for your platformer game? Well, now you have to make for it. And to inventors, this process is hell. They just hate that long mid stretch of a game's development, where you've already implemented most of the mechanics and features, and you just have to keep remixing and reinventing the content to generate content for the players. Derek suggests that you can combat this feeling somewhat by trying to spread out the creation of new features and ideas throughout development as much as possible. Instead of front-loading absolutely everything into your initial prototype and then just having to generate loads of content for it afterwards. This involves trying to get a rough draft of the whole project done as soon as possible, while taking periodic breaks to add new features and polish up the ones that are working really well. There is no worse feeling than having to cut a fully polished feature because it doesn't fit the game anymore. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do with Project Drifter at the moment. I have the controls and core mechanics in the game, level generations been added, and the combat works, I have an enemy or two. Now I'm trying to outline the game itself and get that satisfying roguelike loop implemented from level to level. So when I have that outline done, I can still enjoy the fun of implementing new enemies, new mechanics and new zones, but I'll have the added benefit of being able to just drop them into an already playable game and be able to see directly whether they help add to it or not. Derek defines a burrower as someone who likes to burrow into a challenging problem and then forgets or ignores the bigger picture. Derek says that programmers are very susceptible to this and I completely agree. You can improve solutions to problems literally forever in programming, but at some point you have to decide to move on to the next one. This is why I say that optimization is for nerds. Sure, you want to keep relatively good coding practices and you don't want to write pure trash code, but if your solution works, is reasonably maintainable and it doesn't completely tank the game's performance, 
Just move on to the next feature. Finish the game. Derek also says that pixel artists will end up burrowing too. They can endlessly adjust the pixels they're placing and keep trying to refine the abstraction of the image. But to be honest, I think it applies to almost every discipline in some way. You can literally endlessly design loads and loads more upgrades for your roguelike. You can always keep fine tuning and balancing the levels for your music and sound effects literally endlessly. The key to avoiding burrowing is to just be happy with getting to the stage of good enough and then just moving on to the next part of the project. It helps me to keep in mind that for those features that are really tempting to burrow into, I can come back to them later, I just need to make sure that I hit that good enough part for every other part in the project first. 80% is good enough. After the burrower, Derek outlines the wanderer. These are people who would love to be making games, but they don't really have any prior skills in the core aspects like programming, art, or music, so they don't really have any platform to jump off of. I think that this archetype can also be somewhat of a next stage for daydreamers as well. They have had ideas and thought about making games for a really long time, but when it comes to actually starting, they either lack the motivation to begin making something, or they literally don't know where to start. Derek also says that these people are often looking for a silver bullet. They're looking for that one idea that's really motivating or looking for that one tool that's just going to solve all of their technical problems. But in reality, silver bullets don't exist. If you find yourself wondering, you really need to try and find which part of making games is the most exciting to you, and then try and make some steps in that direction. A game jam is typically suggested as a way of getting started with something like this, but I was thinking that if you're only interested in one specific area of game dev, then game jams aren't necessarily ideal. Perhaps you're only interested by game art, in which case you might be better off just trying to make yourself a small tile set instead of entering a game jam and having to manage code, music, sound effects, and art. It ultimately comes down to finding out the areas of game development that really get you engaged. The final archetype that Derek suggests is called the finisher. This is someone who, as the name suggests, finishes things. He also states that finishing projects is a skill that needs to be practiced, and I completely agree. Finishing a project requires tons of project management, staying disciplined and staying motivated skills, which are all very different from the technical skills that are required to technically make a game. And Derek says that being a finisher isn't necessarily the best archetype there is and that all of the archetypes have their specific roles within making a game. But I think that being a finisher is just sort of what happens when each other archetype overcomes their shortcomings. Daydreamers could have the most creative ideas and visions, but they really have to temper them with what is practically possible. Wanderers could be really skilled at specific or all aspects of game development, but they have to get going first. The inventor could be making the most amazing prototypes ever, but no one's really going to play them that much if they only ever make two levels for it. The burrower could be creating the most complex optimized systems ever seen, but no one will notice if it's never released. So I really think that being a finisher of some sort is what happens when each of the other archetypes overcomes their shortcomings. But that means that being a finisher isn't easy, you have to overcome the problems that naturally present themselves to your personality indie game dev type. It's one of the many reasons as to why indie game development can be so difficult. So which type of developer are you currently? I really like the ideas that Derek has presented in this article, and I can see myself in every single one of the archetypes at different points in my life, at least to some degree. When I was really young, I was definitely a daydreamer. And for a little while after that, I was definitely a wanderer. I wanted to make games, but I didn't know where to start and I didn't have the motivation. But then I started to take coding classes at school and uni and sort of evolved into more of a inventor burrower type. Hopefully now I can see myself as more of a finisher, at least that's what I'm aiming to do with Project Drifter. So let me know what you think, let me know what kind of indie game developer archetype you are. Remember to subscribe if you want more game dev content each week. Follow me on Twitter for sporadic updates on my game. Join the Discord to get feedback on your projects and talk to other devs. And until next time, goodbye.